Hi, everyone, and welcome to our webinar Wednesday presented by Acumen. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Stephen Phelps, and I'm the Marketing Director here at Acumen. And today we brought in Michael Roman and Michael Sodano from ADP to go over how you can unify your payroll and accounting with Sage Intact Payroll. But before I pass it on to them, please note that this webinar is in listen-only mode. And if you have any questions, then please use the chat option, and we will answer near the end of the presentation. We have a lot to show you today, so I will now pass it on to Michael. Thank you very much, Stephen. We appreciate the time that you and your clients have spent with us today. And we also appreciate the opportunity to introduce you all to Sage Intact Payroll powered by ADP. What we're going to have today is a quick overview of Sage Intact Payroll, what it is, how it came about and why it's important to your business. And also what we'll do is go through about a 30 to 35 minute demo. My name is Michael Roman. I'm up here up top. I'm actually the VAR and ERP channel manager for ADP. I'm specifically partnered with Acumen and its team to help bring Sage and Tech Pearl to the market. I've been with ADP for about 20 years. I've gone through a number of different roles. So what we'll do is before we do the demo, I'll have Michael introduce himself at that time. Michael, if you can move on, let's get started with the overview of Sage and Tech Payroll. Now, as you look at Sage Intact, which obviously is an incredibly powerful ERP solution, you know, you look at it and one thing it doesn't have as part of it is an embedded payroll solution that's native. And this is for a very important reason. Sage, as they were looking at expanding Intact, decided to look for partners that are leaders in the HR and HCM industry. And they went through a deep evaluation, it took about 12, maybe 18 months. They went through about 15 vendors looking for a variety of qualifications. And in the end, they decided to partner with ADP. And they did that because of a couple of reasons, because of ADP's leadership in the technology industry. We've been doing payroll and HR for about 70 years now. We have some of the leading solutions out there in the marketplace. But also we were able to work with them and come up with some very specific solutions for their clients not only in technology space, but also when it comes to service implementation. So what you're going to see is a solution that's really designed to be the engine for payroll for Sage Intact and works seamlessly to unify your accounting, finance, and payroll. Thank you, Michael. So what does it do? Why is it such a powerful solution? Well, it is, as it says here, an out-of-the-box solution that integrates payroll with your Sage Intact ERP is a fully functional payroll as well as HR solution that brings some unique advantages. One is that it becomes a single vendor with Sage Intact. It's an ADP engine that powers it, basically white labeled. But what you find is that it's billed seamlessly as you bill with Sage Intact. So you're not receiving separate bills from ADP. Integration is included. This is deep integration, GL, employee data, and some other options that you'll see. But we also pair with it dedicated implementation, which means implementation teams designed to work just with Sage Intact clients to implement Sage Intact payroll, as well as dedicated service. So this really is a kind of fully scoped solution that delivers incredible technology, incredible service, and at best, really giving you the, the most powerful solution possible for your organization. Michael? Now, when you look at and what you'll see is I think you're going to love this. You're going to love the demo is that this payroll solution is designed to help you instantly share information between the Sage and Tech payroll and your ERP. When it comes to payroll itself, really, you're going to find something that it's fully functional in all 50 states. It helps streamline your payroll processes at, when you come from in-house, especially complying in every state with all taxes and regulations. I think you'll also have the capability and the comfort knowing that you have ADP backing this solution, making it the most, keeping up to date with the most current options and capabilities, but also backing it with our industry leading security, which is incredibly important in today's environment. Michael? So payroll, while that's the core engine for what you're going to see today, this is also a fully functional HR solution. So you're going to see different components of HR, which 
as you know, people are the most important part of any organization. So this solution helps you with everything from identifying and attracting talent, managing employee records, helping with things like benefits administration, and even robust timekeeping. So it truly is an end-to-end -end solution beyond just payroll. I think really the most important part of it is how it's gonna save you time, which means saving you money as well. When you look at different parts of the, of the tool and the solution, it's gonna help you streamline really critical tasks. For example, you look at things like benefits enrollment. You know, benefits are such an important part of your employee, employee consideration and compensation. The average employee spends only about 30 minutes going through enrollment every year, but it costs hours, hundreds of hours for organizations to set up and manage benefits. We can help you streamline your benefit process, saving up to 600 hours, cutting administrative time in a number of different hours, and really giving more time back to your team and your people while giving your employees an incredible experience. So as we look forward from here, I'm excited to show you this solution. Um, like I said, about 30 minutes ago through afterwards, have some time for questions. We appreciate your time. And I'm gonna hand it off to Michael Sedano. Michael, take it away. Awesome, thank you. And hi everyone, my name is Michael Sedano and I'm a solutions consultant here at ADP. And today we're going to show you the Sage Intact payroll solution powered by ADP. But before we go into the actual demo, I wanted to point out the six different methods of data transfer that we have built out with Sage Intact. That includes general ledger data movement. So post payroll, being able to send uh, employee job, task, project, fund level detail over to Sage Financials. We also have the ability to move employee data from the Sage Intact payroll over to Sage Financials. So employee changes, terminations, new hires are all being sent uh, from the payroll engine directly to Sage Financials. We have a 360 uh, degree integration with expense reimbursement originating in Sage Financials to send to the payroll engine for payout and then back to Sage Financials on that general ledger file feed. And then the last three data points are around time and attendance. So using Sage time and expense as a system of record or using the payroll engine as a system of record for time and attendance and having that information flow fluidly between the systems. Uh, in addition to that, we also have the ability for dimensions to sync from Sage time and expense over to the time card for employees to actually clock time to specific jobs, projects, funds, et cetera. <clears throat> We'll switch gears now and go into the actual platform. So this is Sage Intact Payroll powered by ADP. And what we're looking at now is the landing page for that platform. And we can customize this. You can see we have welcome to the employee portal. We also have different dashboards for easy access to HR and teams. And because our open enrollment period is in 31 days, we've also put the benefits tile at the top of the page. This information can change and we can say, you know, we really want to prioritize our hiring process, our referral process. So let's move that scan it to the top of the page and allow our employees to take a picture of that and immediately go into that recruiting center to refer a friend or even to apply for a job internally. We can link out from this system to internal links as well as external links. So if we're using, uh, a CRM or a specific database that we ask employees to log into each and every day, we can create specific icons for that on the landing page. This way, when the employee logs in, they're first going here to understand information that's going on within the organization before going out and doing other work. Uh, some clients will also highlight employees here. So an employee spotlight or company picnic. So really utilizing this space as an internet. In addition to having the portal here, we also support the, the mobile app. And so allowing a place for employees to clock in and out, to review their benefits or their pay statements. And all of this information makes it really easy for us to understand what's going on from an HR payroll and time perspective as an employee, which reduces the amount of questions that are brought to our HR and payroll teams. Here, looking at my pay, I can see 
my current pay stub and prior pay statements. This information can be downloaded and emailed directly out of the, the mobile application. So if I'm applying for a home loan or a vehicle loan, we make it very easy to move that data out of the system. Down below, we also have access to our tax statements. I can change and edit direct deposit information or tax withholdings. And we also give you some control as the client. So if you wanted to say, let's turn off edit privileges to the employee for certain things, we can make sure that those things are turned off. We also can set up approval paths. So if I change maybe my direct deposit, that doesn't have a lot of implication for the payroll team. But if I change my address, you know, I may be in a different tax jurisdiction. And so we can set up an approval path that either pings or ask, a, ask an administrator for an approval before that change takes effect. So how are we getting folks into the system? Uh, and before we do that, I also want to mention the security of the system internally. We can say, the first three tabs here are specifically dedicated to our employees, so they will only see their own information, uh, resources, different learning items that they can, they can uh, go into. And then for our direct reports, maybe we open up the My Team and the Reporting tab for those folks. So I can see overtime numbers and I can see the jobs that my employees are working on, performance reviews, et cetera. And then for our C-suite and administrative level folks, we can open up the remaining tabs. So really just using the same system, but making sure that internally we're not sharing information that shouldn't be shared. Uh, we can get pretty granular on what we can hide from even the manager level. If we wanted to hide pay rates or social security numbers, um, address data, we really have the ability to make this system your own and go along with the flow of the organization. From the process tab, which is a tab that is uh, accessible to that administrator, I can log in to my hire rehire template. Once launched, I can see the different templates available for me to add a new hire. This information can flow in from that same recruiting center that we talked about earlier, um, the ability to capture recruiting information both through a portal or through a mobile device, and it can pre-populate that data into the form. If we're using a, a third-party recruiter, we can also have this data flow in. Uh, we have pre-built connectors with certain partners. Uh, otherwise, we can also manually enter the data into the system. So Frank Smith is a new hire. We've indicated a hire date and that this is a new position. We also will be prompted to add lived and worked in information. So the system is taking care of those tax jurisdictions, depending on what we've entered as the employee's address and their lit worked in location. Once I submit this data, I can see that Frank Smith has been completed as a new hire. From here, we'll show the transfer of information into Sage Financials. So logging into Sage Intact, I can now click on my employees and make sure that Frank Smith has made his way over to Sage Financials. Here, by typing in Smith, I'm able to see Frank Smith's contact information. And by viewing that data detail, we can see that the employee ID within Sage Financials is matching the associate ID from Sage Intact Payroll powered by ADP. We mentioned before as part of this data flow that if I have any changes to information here, it will automatically be updated. Um, if I terminate this employee, we're also sending that termination data over to Sage Intact. So just keeping both systems uh, up to date with what's going on from an HR perspective. Now, once we have that new hire, uh, um, sent over to Sage Financials, we can launch an onboarding experience. And this is going to walk that new hire through an onboarding process. This is something that we can send out uh, a few days or a few weeks before the employee starts. But the idea here is to welcome the employee to the organization and take tasks that are typically done on day one and get them out of the way so that on day one, we can focus on acclimating the employee with the culture and the team that they'll be working with showing them around, um, or virtually getting to know them. 
the first thing that the employee sees is a welcome message from their specific manager. And this is something that we can utilize a template for, or we can change on each outgoing, but it lets them know that we're excited for their first day. We can also include videos here. So this, all of these steps here are optional. We can omit them. We can also reorder them. So if you had a, a something a different flow in mind, we could make sure that we're going with that and flow and configuring that flow for you. But the video piece here is allowing us to take a, video, a Vimeo or YouTube link and copy and paste it in embedded into the onboarding process. Typically, we see our clients highlight different items like work we're doing with the community, or a little bit about our organization organization, maybe even interviewing different people in different departments, just to make that new hire feel more comfortable with working for the organization. We're also showing that team member, their manager, as well as the different people that they'll be working with. This is especially important if we're in a virtual work environment, we can see the put a face to a name before starting. And again, just adding to that comfort on day one. Under the profile, I have an ability to add my picture as well as confirm information that, the, that we have on file. So I can say, yes, this is my up-to-date address. I can also review additional information and make sure that everything is added correctly. In addition to collecting the specific address and contact data, we can also collect EEO information, protected veteran status and marital status, status, as well as custom fields. So if we're working in an industry where we have uniforms, I can ask that employee for their t-shirt size. We can also ask for fillable fields like pet's name or anything that we're collecting at, for the culture of the organization. Under tasks, we have our HR payroll favorites. These are the, typically the, paper, the paperwork that we're filling out on day one. And so we have section one of the I-9 form. We're letting the employee know this will take roughly five to eight minutes to complete. And then we're walking them through this process step-by-step step in bite-sized pieces. At the end, the employee e-signs the document. And then on day one, we are able to fill out section two or section three if the employee is a rehire at either the manager or the HR level. We also can see tax withholding data, review company policies, emergency contacts. We have the ability to also have employees fill out forms. So if we have any unique forms to the organization, the example we have on the screen is a parking pass. And so we're asking that specific employee for their license plate number and a little bit of information about their vehicle. And then we're also asking them to e-sign that documentation. So this is an example of something that we can add that's custom. Uh, but you can add your own forms and, of course, make those fillable. And, of course, any documentation that we may require, we can also ask that the employee upload that documentation. And it's all flowing into the payroll engine. A little bit more information about the company, how we got to where we are before seeing the neighborhood tab, which shows me my reports to location. I can see a little bit about the area. I can plan my commute, and this is all powered by Google. So all this information is flowing into the same data center, into Sage and TAC payroll powered by ADP. We can see Addy Adams information here. I can see the contact data that was entered as part of onboarding and demographic data. We can also see those custom fields. One of the things that we took from feedback from clients was that reporting out of HR or payroll systems is often clunky um, and very hard to collect. And so our response to that was a patented field grabber tool um, that we launched where we're able to then say, you know, I know where this data point is in the system and I just want to be able to pull that into a report. And so I know that name information is here. I know that I may need that t-shirt size and maybe I want to pull in an email address and home phone number. The system will let us know that we pulled a report in the past that was similar. Otherwise, I can continue across the different pieces of the technology. I can go into time, I can go into recruiting, 
and I can pull those individual fields where I know they are within the system into that report. We're making sure that everyone is compliant. Uh, you know, no matter what industry, we often see license and certifications. You know, for manufacturing, we may have forklift operators. For healthcare, we may have um, our LPNs. And so just making sure that everyone is up to date with when these licensing and certifications are coming up for expiration. Here, I can see that we set a 30 day reminder, but we can really change that up depending on your flow. And we are notifying the practitioners, the managers, as well as the employee themselves that that, that that specific license is coming up for expiration. And so again, just making sure that everyone is compliant and that we have all of those forms or, or certifications renewed on time. The same thing goes for skill set. So we can input an employee's skill in a certain area, and then we can also rate them. So if I have a specific job or project that I'm working on, and I would like to know where our employees sit in a certain skill set, I can do a search, I can pull a report, and I can say, you know, this is going to be the best person for that job. We also have language information, awards, so kind of like a living resume living within the system. In addition to hosting all of the data points associated with the employment profile, we also have the ability to host all of the specific documents with our unlimited document repository here. We allow 21 different file types ranging anywhere from MP3 and MP4 down to Excel, Word, and PDF documents. Here I can see that Adrian Adams has 11 documents, three requiring an electronic signature. We can prompt her to fill out those documents and make sure they're signed. We also can see a confidential medical folder. So we can turn on or off access to specific folders and make sure that again, we're not having um, an internal security incident. So we can turn on access to a confidential folder to maybe one or two people within the organization. If I needed to recall any of this information for a job, I can do a global search or on an individual level, I can export to PDF or a zip file. So if we are being asked by an auditor to supply certain documentation, we are able to quickly and easily extract that data. One other thing from an HR perspective um, that we, we hear a lot from our clients is the ability to supply total rewards or total compensation statements. This is something that we're doing automatically through the deduction and memo codes that are passing through payroll. So not only are we showing that employee their base earnings, but then all the other things that go into that. The employer provided portion of the medical or dental. We can also include PTO, um, vacation days, uh, 401k matches, et cetera. But the idea here is that there is no manual entry or us having to do this in Excel or a Google sheet. It's something that we're automatically reading and then supplying back to either the employee manager or practitioner level. Again, we can detail really who has the ability to see this. Generally hand in hand with our HR, we see clients turn on the benefit enrollment and so this is a benefit administration tool that allows users to quickly and easily go through the open enrollment process, new hire enrollment process, as well as report a life event change directly within the system. They also have the ability to use the mobile app to complete this as well. When I start my enrollment, I'm brought to a welcome screen that highlights maybe the changes that have happened from the prior plan year to the current. We also have clients that will include contact information of who to reach out to internally if I have any questions as I'm going through this enrollment. We also want to make sure that we know who is being covered by the benefits. So the very next step is asking that employee to fill out the dependents and beneficiaries. We also have an option to add any type of surveys that may have an impact to the premium. So tobacco use is generally associated with a surcharge. And so we're making sure to include that so that we know that the employee will be charged that and we can give them the proper information. Next, I have the ability to go through a decision support tool directly embedded within benefits. And so this is going to let the employee know that it'll take roughly eight minutes to complete. 
for pulling in salary data. I also can add my spousal salary and different bonuses or commissions. I can enter current medical insurance coverage. So typically employees estimate that they spend anywhere between 500 and $1,000 less than they actually do on benefits. And so we're serving up how much they've actually spent this year so far on their deductible and how much is remaining. If I look at this information and I see that I um, went over my, my deductible or I spent more than I thought I should, you know, I have the ability to then contrib contribute more to an HSA or maybe go with a different plan that doesn't have as high of a deductible. So just allowing the employee to understand those specific terms within the tool reduces employees' questions by around 80% during the open enrollment process. We're also asking about different lifestyle questions and helping that employee choose will provide them with a soft landing. They have the ability to upload any type of documentation as part of this onboarding for evidence of insurability. And then they would review and submit and have the ability to see those benefit statements um, directly in their inbox. Now, from a practitioner's standpoint, we give our practitioners access to a benefits dashboard where they can see the full open enrollment. I have the ability to nudge employees through the system. So with 30 days remaining, I have 316 employees that haven't started. So I can nudge them through the system and send them a reminder to make sure they're going in and completing that enrollment so that we have active participation. I can see carrier approvals. We also have the ability to talk to carriers through either EDI file feeds or APIs, sending enrollment data directly over to the carrier so that you don't have to manually enter that information. On the back end of that, we're sending all the payroll data directly over to the pay profile. Um, using effective dating. So I don't have to key those deductions manually either. It's automatically being sent over to payroll using that effective date. And then of course, benefit invoicing. We hear sometimes from clients that they're either not doing this or sometimes they've been burnt by it by someone that's been terminated and we're still being charged for them. Our typical carrier providers allow us 30, 60, 90 days before uh, they will no longer give us a refund on that premium. And so it's important to be able to pull these benefit invoices by carrier and match directly what we're seeing from that carrier's bill. If there is a variance, I can go further into the details and understand why, but just making sure that we're doing this and saving any costly errors. One other thing that I'd like to point out is the chat function. So at the administrative level, if I have any questions, I can click on the chat box here. This is going to take me to a real-time support person that can help me with benefits. If I go into our ACA compliance dashboard um, and we, we use the chat function, it's going to take me to someone who's familiar with ACA. And so we have these specific folks set up internally so that if you didn't want to get on the phone, we have that in, in tech support. For folks on the call with varying hours, we also are tracking your measurement periods to make sure that we are aware if an employee is trending towards full-time hours or if they've gone over that threshold and now are required to be offered benefits. And so the system is constantly monitoring this information, either using the time and attendance module or using the hours that are flowing through payroll. Speaking of time and attendance, we have several different options for collecting time data, whether it be through the web, through a mobile, or through one of our physical options like a biometric clock with a proximity badge scanner, or if it's one of your devices, an iPad or an Android tablet that supports facial recognition and for touchless clocking for the employees. No matter how we're collecting that data, it's all flowing into the same spot. So within the same team, I can say, you know, some of our folks are going to be clocking through mobile, others will use a physical time clock. And so we can have different clocking options for different folks on our teams. This is the manager's view under the My Team tab of the time and attendance within their teams. Under things to do, I can say, you know, I want to see if there are any missed punches. So we can turn that on or off. I can also say, I want to see when an employee worked longer than 10 hours, or they clocked in earlier or later than expected, or worked 30 minutes outside of their scheduled shift. 
when we have these bumpers in place, it allows the manager to quickly and easily go to their things to do and see what needs to be addressed or what those exceptions are. And so we look and see that we have a lot of folks that have missed punches. I can click on the missed punch. Um, I can quickly see the schedule and I can enter that out time just by entering 4.30 here. We also see that the employee clock time to a specific department and job. Uh, if I wanted to, I also have contact information, both the phone number and email address of that employee. So we can confirm with them that they actually left at 430. Looking at an individual employee's time card, I can see all of the information relating to their time in attendance. So we can see in and out hours, and this time card could be customized. In this situation, we have location department, but we can also have grant, we can have job, project, billable, non-billable. We can turn on and off punch and have an employee enter specific hours. We also can have multiple line items per day. So if an employee is switching between different jobs and projects within the same day, we can have them record that as well. One other thing that our uh, time and attendance system allows us to do is as an employee, I can see if I have enough balance to support a vacation at the end of July. So I can enter a specific date. I can see those accruals update and then I can submit my time off requests. This would flow to my manager for approval and then would exist within my time card and flow over to payroll. We mentioned before that the time data can also be sent from the payroll engine here over to Sage and Tech Time and Expense. We can also pull time card data from Sage and Tech Time and Expense directly into the payroll engine here. Once we have the time collected and we have, have all of our approvals ready, I can log into the payroll dashboard. And when we log into the payroll dashboard in Sage and Tech Payroll Powered by ADP, I can see things to do at the top of the page. This is letting me know, you know, maybe we have a, an employee that's been terminated and we did an import and their file number came up and now we're showing a terminated employee that has pay data. Or maybe we forgot to put a new hire in. And so we're calling out those specific items that need to be addressed before we process payroll. For some of our larger clients, we also allow multiple companies to exist within the same database, including multiple different tax IDs or FEINs. This is an example of that where we can see multiple different pay frequencies. We have monthly, weekly, um, and we also are using different FEINs here. Going into a payroll worksheet, we can pull in that time data directly from uh, time and expense. I have the ability to import a file from a third party. We also can set up API and file-based transmissions to populate the pay data here. I also have the option to manually enter the information. Once we have the data imported into the system, we can confirm that everything looks correct. So we'll pull up a pay worksheet and I can see that our employee, Anthony Albright, has several line items here because we're categorizing the time in different ways. I can see this cost string is showing us that we have a different job, project, or task, and it's delineated by dashes within the cost center. So we have one hour of time coded to this, these dimensions, eight hours of time coded to another dimension. We're also able to handle any type of rate changes. So for this same employee, just working in a different job or project may um, constitute a different rate of pay. Clicking on the file number for the employee, we're able to see everything relating to the employee's pay. And so this is our either salary or regular rate of pay for hourly folks. I can see all of our deductions, direct deposit data, and then our withholdings for federal, state, and local, as well as any accumulators and time off that we mentioned before. The Field Grabber tool is also an option for the pay profile. So if I needed to pull a list of deductions or a list of pay uh, information, we can launch the Field Grabber tool and hop into the pay profile to pull some of this data into a report.
going back to the worksheet, once I confirm that everything looks correct, uh, and another call out here too, if we are doing things on a regular uh, cadence, we can add them as a column here, um, car allowances, uh, tool payment deductions, you know, we can add different columns just to make it easier for entry. So this is just an example, we can make it um, more complex, we can also make it more basic as well, depending on your setup. Once I confirm the information is correct, I can calculate my payroll. And this is going to take me to a screen that allows me to compare a prior pay with a current, with a current pay and spot any large variances. Here, I can see the current pay cycle aligns directly with the prior pay period here. But if I did spot any variances between the two, we can view the detail summary. I can also pull an employee by employee summary showing me that data detail. We're also outlining the regular and overtime hours, just making sure that everything lines up. Now, the magic happens once I click approve. Uh, there are a lot of tasks associated with processing payroll in-house, and we've listed some of them here on the page. Uh, when we partner with Sage and Tap Payroll powered by ADP, we're taking everything in gray off of your plate. And so the real areas of concern are getting that time into payroll, processing the new hires, terminations, and changes within the system, and then if necessary, doing our voids and adjustments after the fact. Otherwise, we're doing our new hire reporting to the state and local levels. We're also um, supplying W-2s and 1099s. Post payroll, we're also sending this information directly back to Sage Intact. We have a dedicated page for the general ledger file movement of those journal entries. And during implementation, we map your chart of accounts, debits, credits, and how you're doing your employee mapping. Once I finish processing the payroll, I can click create GL file in our GL interface. I can then select the payroll that we just processed and click create. Once this is complete, I can click transmit and within about 10 to 15 minutes, I'll receive an email notification letting me know that those journal entries have been successfully pushed over to Sage Intact, uh, Sage Financials. And here, I have the ability to review that transaction within Sage Intact, and we can see that we have the department and location breakdown here, but again, we can splice this data in different ways depending on your setup. Sage Intact Payroll powered by ADP has a, a myriad of different standard reports. We have 174 standard reports within the system all in their individual buckets, depending on what you have turned on or off within these modules. In addition to that, we also allow you to set up your own custom reporting and using that field grabber to do so, or just using our uh, custom report wizard. One thing that we wanted to make sure that we highlight is the ability for us to delve into the data and splice it in different ways using the data cloud tool. The first thing that you'll be asked if you implement this is what your role within the organization is and some of the most important things to you. And so this user indicated headcount hires and terminations. And so these are the things that we will highlight on the landing screen, as well as within this employee's mobile app. One of the things to point out in the mobile app is that we will give you actionable insights. So if I am seeing a variation in overtime or turnover in any of these areas, we're going to call them out. And so a lot of the times we hear from clients, I don't know what I don't know. And this is our response to that. We can call out, hey, within this specific location, your turnover is accelerating at twice the speed of the rest of the organization. Or in this specific location, we're seeing higher overtime numbers. And so just making sure to call those out and make them actionable to those users. We can, of course, dive into the dashboards on the mobile, but I'm going to switch back to the PC version so that we have a bigger visual. Within the specific metrics that we have turned on within uh, Sage and TAC Payroll, I can then dive into those specific modules and understand a little bit more about what's going on. 
uh, recruiting funnels, for instance, I can see how many new applicants we need to have to yield X number of employees. So in this case, I can see that we have 970 new applicants and we yield 12 new hires. I can also distribute this information by specific departments, by hiring managers or job titles, our uh, recruiters specifically. And so we can take a look at the data and see, you know, is there anything that we can take from a best practices standpoint and implement it on other teams? If we're noticing that certain recruiters are doing a better job of, of recruiting, you know, if I can see like for like numbers, but we're showing different hiring numbers or we're getting folks that are quickly moving more quickly through the process, what best practices can we collect from those teams and implement on other teams? The same thing applies for um, our different metrics. So we can go into HR and take a look at things like turnover. Now, when we look at the turnover rate, the default here is generally time. So we're looking at our turnover rate and how it fluctuates over time. But I can also say, again, I wanna look at this by specific gender, or I wanna look at this by location or manager. And so we can see those turnover rates and how they vary by specific metrics internally and just splice that data in different ways. This is showing location data we have by state, but you know we can also uh, divide this out to specific individual locations you have or departments even. I also have the backing of the benchmarking data powered by ADP here. And so I can enter in my specific location. I can also say this is the specific industry that we're operating in. This is our revenue size, our employee size. And we can see where our organization stacks against that ADP benchmarking data. ADP pays roughly one in five, one in six Americans. And so this data set is over 39 million employees across the US and over 980,000 organizations. And so we can say, you know, how are we stacking up against the ADP benchmark within these specific states? We also can take that benchmarking to things like understanding compensation or even uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion metrics across the country. So we talked earlier, over 980,000 organizations, over 39 million employees that we have as part of this data set. And so if I'm hiring a new person, let's call it an IT manager, I can type in that specific job title. And now instead of looking at hundreds of thousands of organizations and millions of employees, we're looking at 24,000 employees across 10,000 organizations in the US. I can take a look at specific industry, uh, specific areas as well. So, you know, let's say we've always operated in the state of Florida, and now we want to build out from that. And we have someone that's interested in this job, and they live in Chicago. How much should I pay that individual? Because the employees pay is based on where they live, not where we're based. And so looking at the Chicago area and IT managers, we have roughly 850 employees across almost 500 organizations. And I can see that the base is around $25,000. I also can see their quarterly turnover rate and roughly the amount of time that it's taken to fill a position within this specific area. Furthermore, I can look at the, gra the demographic detail and see what the male female percentage is or the race and ethnicity percentages or how long these folks are staying around for. If we were looking for specific job titles without an area in mind, we can back out of the specific area and I can see where most of this workforce sits, what their median salary is, and then the salary go growth or decline. An important thing when we're talking about compensation is to understand how the market is responding to specific market trends. And so this information is updated on a monthly basis. So we're not taking 12 month old survey data and delivering it to our clients. We're taking data that is updated on a monthly basis and making sure that we understand the, the specifics that are going on in the market. You know, in March, after March of 2020, we saw in the healthcare industry, you know, not maybe not the base, but things like bonuses. We were trying to pull folks that 
uh, stay-at-home moms and dads and folks that have retired from healthcare. We're trying to pull them back into the industry because we were experiencing a labor shortage. And so as a result, we saw a spike in bonuses. And you know, without having a tool that's updated monthly, we wouldn't understand where that number is. So there's a lot of power behind the data being refreshed on a frequent basis. We'll also call out things um, that some clients don't think of. Uh, you know, are you ready for your aging workforce? Is there pay equity amongst your employees? What is the cost of your turnover? And so I can click on any of these storyboards and have ADP tell me a story about the data. Specifically to the aging workforce, you know, we anticipate by the year 2025 that 75% of the workforce will be millennial. And so, you know, with that in mind, we want to understand how many employees we have projected to retire. Within the next one year, this organization has 94 employees projected to retire. I can also enter my own retirement age, depending on my industry. And then 110 within the next five years. We're pointing out the jobs that are at risk, as well as the locations that are at risk. And then we're supplying tips on how to move forward. So we want to talk to the employees that are retiring soon and understand their plan of action. We also want to plan our recruitment strategy around that. You know, how are we handing off that knowledge to the incoming generation? Um, when we retire folks, we don't want that knowledge base to simply walk out the door. We wanna make sure that those folks are taking on mentors and passing on that knowledge for business continuity. Within the benchmarks, we also can tell your organization, you know, I'm an organization and I work in a specific manufacturing industry. Uh, I can enter in my revenue size, and then we can say, you know, for headcount, how many HR staff is appropriate for a 200 employee manufacturing company? Um, so I can enter those specific benchmarks and I can see where we're standing. I can do the same thing for payroll spend. I also can utilize artificial intelligence to tell me a little bit about my workforce. So we have been in the business of payroll for over 70 years. We take the turnover factors like the employee's last raise or promotion, marital status, commute time and distance, all using those data points that we're housing directly within the system. And then saying uh, with that data, these are the employees that have a high probability of turnover, or these are your managers with employees at high risk. And these are the specific jobs that you have that are at high risk. And if there's anything within your span of control that can be done, um, you know, making sure that we address that by watching the tutorial and seeing how these things are done. So that was a brief overview of the Sage and Tap payroll system powered by ADP. I'm going to hand back to, to Michael to close us out. Uh, let me just pull up that slide again. And thank you everyone for your time. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate that. So hopefully if we got a chance to take a good look at the Sage and Tech Payroll Powered by ADP solution and find something that you like about the system. When you think about just a quick kind of recap, you can see that is an end-to-end -end solution. And it provides a number of different benefits. I think first part is an improved workflow between HR and ERP. It's important for those systems that part of your technology stack to become more aligned. And we do that via bringing APA, APIs, you bring data from the ADP system over to Intech, but also back into ADP. That actually helps improve reporting across the board. It also helps improve insights. You saw where Michael went into some of the data cloud and we're able to bring data in from Intact, helping with some comparisons for labor and budgeting, but also providing you great insights to wages and, and you know, what that means and how salaries are impacted and what it can mean for organization, especially in a competitive sense. The experience is another part. I think when you look at it, we provide a very strong employee experience from hire all the way to retire. You know, when you look at it, um, Pew Research Center said that about 50 million people by the beginning of 2023 of the last year had changed jobs. However, you know, 20% of those individuals leave a company within the first 45 days. That turnover costs money. And, but when you see how we're able to provide a very 
solid and, and enjoyable experience and easy experience for new employees, new hires coming on. Also bringing that data over into Intact, it can actually help you in your retention efforts. I think the last part really is compliance. You know, there's a lot of compliance risk out there for organizations and more is increasing every day. In the state of Florida itself recently, a law was passed that is going to require the use of E-Verify for organizations over 25 employees. So if you're a Florida client, Florida employee, and you're not using E-Verify, you don't have to figure out how to do it. Well, when it comes to Sage and Tech payroll and our onboarding, we actually have E-Verify included. That's just one of the areas where we can help with compliance, that as well as in areas like reporting. So, you know, if I'd love to hear any questions you have about the about the solution, about the service itself. So I'll, I'll let Stephen kind of take a look, see what we've got. Yes. So at this time, we'll open up the chat option. Um, you can either write in the chat or the Q&A. We'll read your question out loud and answer. Um, it looks like there was a few that came in during the presentation. Um, the first one that I saw was, is Sage Intact Payroll suitable for small to medium-sized companies? Yeah, great question. Great question. Yeah, so the, organ the this solution really was built for companies from 30 employees all the way up to 3,000, um, you know, so we can service all those, all those, all those groups there, companies of size all along that range and in every vertical. So there really is no limitation. I think we since, since the end of last year, um, we've seen about 300 organizations sign up for Sage Intact payroll as of, I think it was last week. So yeah, any company size from 30 to 3,000, you're a good fit. Perfect. Um, another one that I saw, um, what advantages does Sage Intact Payroll have over other outsourced solution providers? Yeah, I, I love that because when you look at it, you know, there are organizations that can provide potentially integrations, but none of them was built that is Sage Intact Payroll. So this is the, you know, design function for payroll and human capital management and designed specifically to work with Sage Intact. You know, that's why we not only deliver specific integration, uh, preferred service, to, uh, preferred implementation, as well as pricing. So it really makes it the ideal solution for Sage and Tech customers. Perfect. Um, it looks like that's all I'm seeing. Um, I'll give it a few more seconds if anyone wants to write any more questions. If not, we'll go ahead and wrap up a little early. Perfect. I just want to say, you know, Stephen, thank you very much to you and the Acumen team for allowing Michael, myself, the opportunity to come speak to you. If you have any questions, definitely get a hold of your, your Acumen partner. Um, they have a lot of information. And what they'll do is set up a pretty easy one hour discovery call with myself and to go over you know, your needs and your goals and to see if this is a good fit for you. So thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, Michael. So looks like that's all we have. So again, thank you all for joining us today. Um, like what Michael said, if you do have any additional questions, uh, please reach out to Agman by emailing us at am at agmanfl.com or give us a call at 407-965-2411. Um, our next webinar will be on June 21st with Craftable, uh, which is a restaurant management platform for purchasing AP automation, inventory control, and sales analytics. So please be on the lookout for invites. And with that, I want to say thank you again to ADP for their great presentation. And we look forward to seeing you on our next webinar Wednesday. Thank you, everyone.